good day all. Welcome to another edition, another episode. It's another Friday. Uh, I'm still out solo. I did Albury West Bromwich yesterday around the Black Country. So today I've travelled about half an hour south into Worcestershire. Where, as you can see from the title of the video, I am doing Bromsgrove. Doesn't look to be that much here, so I should motor through it reasonably fast, hopefully. Uh, I'm going to get as much done again as I can today, uh, and then we're off to Yorkshire tomorrow, uh, and Holly will be back. Sorry to disappoint. So, uh, I'm in the Stoke Heath area, uh, which looks like a nice picturesque little village uh, at the sort of south of Bromsgrove, between Bromsgrove and Worcester, where my first port of call is going to be the U and Lamb. Uh, bar restaurant by the looks of things, food led driven house but looks very nice got very good reviews online so I thought we would start here uh, they were open just before it is 12 o'clock now but they were open just before 12 uh, and then apparently just up the road uh, about 200 yards is a black country house pub might as well pop in there while I'm here eh? I think I probably will you and lamb up first then oh, one absolutely beautiful place all right cut the bales on uh, HPA and butty so my first beer of the day is gonna be a butty uh, but yeah what a gorgeous looking place. The, uh, the menu looks superb. Um, very smartly decked out, very nice all round. So let's uh, get this down me and we'll, uh, we'll get up to the Black Country House pub as well. But yeah, really good start here. Mm. Well, you know me, if I absolutely have to visit a Black Country Ales pub, I will. Yeah, I love this brand. Black Country Ales is definitely one of my favorites, certainly in this area. They're, they're absolutely hands down one of the, the very, very best so this is called the Hanbury Turn. Uh, I'm expecting big things. There'll be some wonderful beers on offer, like there always are, I'm sure. So yeah, on a on a busy crossing, just here on that so that road goes like Bromsgrove to Worcester, the M5 and stuff. So Hanbury Turn out here on a busy junction, and it's my second stop of the day. One of the things I love most about Black Country pubs is you always know what you're going to get. I always know when I walk in, there's going to be a, an array uh, of good ale, which, as per usual, uh, there are. So that's on the board today. I've gone for that number two, the handover from Beowulf, which I've had before. So I can untap that, which is nice. But I mean, they're all they're all similarly decked out. They're all very nice. The uh, the cobs and things are always good. There's a, a bunch of gents uh, tucking in some wonderful looking cobs. But yeah, it's a it's a typical black country ales pub, and another really good one. Right, uh, two great pubs to start with. Um, absolutely loved both of them. Next uh, area is Aston Fields on the outskirts of Bromsgrove. Uh, and there's one big, called the Ladybird Inn, which is that one. So I'm gonna make that stop three if it's open. I'm not sure if it is open. There's kids hanging around outside the front of it. The door doesn't look open, but we'll, uh, we'll go and see. It is, it is open, what a beautiful little pub. Split into two sides, four ales on. Uh, Batham's Bitter. I don't see Batham's Bitters in non-Batham's pubs very often at all. So they've obviously got a good rapport with one of my favourite breweries from over the area. But yeah, it's a uh, top little place. There's cobs and things as well. Yeah, I'm very impressed. It's definitely so far so good. Uh, 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 three very, very good pubs visited uh, thus far. But I've made it into what I assume now is Bromsgrove, the actual town part that I'm, I'm working the way towards, I would assume. And the next one, it's a hungry horse. Now, I said anyone that knows me knows I'm not the world's biggest hungry horse fan. Can't stand that, sell it cheap, pile it high, rubbish food policy that they've got. Um, it's, it's, it's just not for me. Uh, I know it's for some people, but the one thing I will say about hungry horses is quite often the bar area is actually all right. It's a bit, a bit obviously they shoulder sport and stuff usually, and, it, and it's not too bad at all. So let's not dwell on the fact it's a hungry horse out here. Let's get inside and see what they've got to offer. So yeah, Hungry Horse. So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to Hungry Horse's menus and things like that. I mean, the, the prices are insanely cheap for the amount of things you get. That's, that's what I said, just, just on this, on this like great grills, like the amount of food you get on a lot of these things, the prices are uh, just so cheap. Like, so I, I get why they're so popular with, with like families who've got kids to feed and things like that and want a big meal and something cheap. So, I mean, Sunday roast and a drink, a tenner. Two courses Thursday, and then he started for a pound. It's just curry and a drink on a Wednesday, eight quid. Eight quid. It's a, it's a hungry horse, that's to say. Green King IPA is the 
uh, the hand pull and stuff on uh, Hungry Horse, obviously owned by Green King. And it looks very generically like every other Hungry Horse you've probably ever been in. Uh, five minute walk up de does definitely now drop me at the bottom of the town centre, which is there uh, in front of me. So I think everything else I've got to do is pretty much a straight walk that way. So should be reasonably easy. But my next port of call is this. And look how amazingly beautiful that is. So it's called Yale Black Cross. I mean, that is, that is old. So I will see what I can find out about it and tell you in a minute just how old. But that is uh, that's quite an incredible looking pub building that. So this is stop five of the day. It's pretty incredible in here. Absolutely wonderful. So rather than me just spouting in, let's, uh, let's read this together. So built in 1640, this old coaching inn can tell a few tales. The old cellar, which is now unused, was a holding cell for criminals before they were publicly hanged outside. King Charles II visited here during the Battle of Worcester. The ghosts of many tormented souls still reside here. And having walked in here, I can say that, I mean, to be fair, there it is Halloween. We're in October when I'm filming this. Uh, they're geared up for Halloween. I can imagine this being an absolutely phenomenal place to come for Halloween. This, uh, this pleasant looking chap hanging upside over here, he makes noises. He, he scared the uh, bejesus out of me a couple of minutes ago. But look at the, the, the alcoves and things in the bar area. It's just gorgeous, this. Absolutely wonderful place. Holly's going to be absolutely livid that she hasn't seen this one. That, uh, that rather stern pumpkin looking fellow over there makes noises as well. But I have it on good authority, they have a well back here as well. So I haven't been down this bit yet. So you are seeing this through my eyes as I wonder, because I have not been down here at all either. But this, is, this place is very impressive. Very nice, pool table, stuff like that. Wow, it just goes on and on and on. I mean, you can't say they're not making the effort for Halloween, are they? I don't know how we're going to play darts at the moment, but it is a, it's a very nice, very impressive looking pub. Where's this well? Well's down here. Well's down here. Oh, it's right here where I am, look. So there is actually a well, yeah, in the floor of the, uh, of the back bar bit. I'll open it up for you. He's going he's to open it up for us. Look at this. Here we go. This is service. This is, uh, wow. We're trying not to drop our phone down there. <laughs> wow. It's 20 foot down. 20, 20 foot deep. 20 and six feet of water. Six feet of water, wow. That is pretty incredible. Thank you, mate. That's brilliant, yeah. Built in the 1640s. Oh, yeah, the well. That is replaced the original well, 1640. Wow, that is absolutely brilliant. Thank you, mate. No worries. Love that. Oh, and a good little garden space uh, to the rear, look. Great pub, this. Absolutely blown away by Yale Black Cross. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rock pub uh, as well. They have live bands on uh, weekends. Stuff like that. I mean, it looks and feels like a rock club. They've even got their own motorcycle club that use it as their clubhouse. And I can totally see why. I, I thought that was incredible. The beer choice, yeah, yeah all right. The beer choice, not necessarily the greatest in the world, but everything else about that place, especially the, the managers, the staff, and everything else in there, they, they really make up for it, the, the beer, because it's just an incredible old place. So, walking down what I assume is like a high street, uh, and the next stop. So, I've, I've walked for a minute, if that next one is another Tudor fronted. Old, uh, old looking pub in it called a dog and pheasant. So let's make this stop number six of the day. Right, absolutely. So yeah, Tudor front is. So apparently this was closed for three or four years. So I'm really pleased they've got it open. Three decent ales on, on that bar that it's good. And decent stuff amongst the taps. Like it's nice to see a little bit of craft. I've not found a lot of craft the last few days. So finding a jute from salt really does make me happy. But if it was modern contemporary inside, and it's nice, Pool table, stuff like that. So the, uh, the landlord's a really nice chap. It's just, a, it's just a wicked pub all around. It's just a really good boozer. So one that was lost for three or four years that's now coming and thriving, but definitely come down here. Like, I, absolutely, I think this is an absolute belter. You know, honestly, this is a really nice little town centre. So. so not far to go again. So Dog and Pheasant was there. Uh, I'm very tempted to go in that sushi bar, but we've got pubs to go to. That's my good buddy from the uh, Great Historic Pub Crawls would say. If you don't follow him, by the way, you should. But my next stop is going to be Bailey's. This was one that was heavily shouted out to me that said that I would love. So this is going to be stop seven of my day. Uh, and then I head up there, I assume, into the rest of what is Bromsgrove High Street area. So Bailey's, stop number seven. Right, let's be honest. It isn't often I go into a bar and describe it as my like, wait, this, this place is incredible. So, as ever, untap uh, this, their collab from here, Bailey's, with Daya. Their stuff is amazing, but just look at what's in the fridge here. Look. 
this is something that would keep me occupied, not just for one day, but probably an entire month. Because I would see my way through every single one of them in there. They are absolutely astonishingly good. But this is a beautiful place. In general, it's just a, it's just a wicked place. The, the guys here that run this are absolutely superb. There are six extra beer taps up there that do have a vault city amongst them as well. And I resisted the temptation because I'm good like that. But look at this. What an incredible place. It's a banger. It's a, it's a 10 out of 10 from me. I, I think it's superb. You've got to come here. Just, well, everything about Bailey's floats my boat. Um, that's a, an incredible establishment. The, guy, the guys are so much fun. They've got so much energy and love and passion for what they do. And that, that just makes a place, doesn't it? I mean, the beer offering is, is absolutely, undeniably fantastic. And when the guy, you, you see guys that have got so much passion for what they do, um, to brew their own beer with Daya as well, absolutely superb. And honestly, that's an absolute banger. I gave it 4.5 on my untapped. And honestly, they were close to pushing that even higher. So fair play to them. But yeah, that is an absolutely phenomenal establishment. <sighs> On to what I assume is the rest of the high street then. So my next stop is the Golden Cross Hotel just there. And I think we can all tell by now, can't we? This, uh, this blue one on the road, the, the yellow building with the blue frontage on the, uh, on the right hand side. That's the town, Weatherspoons. It's a, it's a lovely town, it's, honestly, some great buildings. Lovely people again. And I'm, uh, I'm having a banging day, I am. Masala Magic Bar and Grill, as if I didn't do enough Desi pubs yesterday. I might, I might have to nip in there for some chicken wings, who knows. But anyway, thing at hand, Golden Cross Hotel. Weather spoons, stop number seven. Decent sized spoons, this. Uh, it's nicely laid out. So I really like the, the frontage, the, the, the blue bits in the windows at the front. But it's the carpet for you. Well, that's not too bad at all, is it, to be fair? Uh, I said, you can tell that we're in Halloween month because uh, all the guests have got a gothic stout from Enville. So I've, uh, I've gone for that. Uh, it's that just here, look. Yeah, decent sized, uh, decent sized spoons. I, I almost went for that market porter because I do love a porter. But you know, it is, as I said, Halloween month. So let's uh, let's have a look at this then. Enville are good. I had one of their porters yesterday actually, uh, and it was very good. Well, that's very good. Gothic stout from Enville. Top notch. Decent enough spoons to be fair. But here's your uh, history and culture bit. A Tudor house. Look at that. That. It's pretty beautiful, isn't it? Right in the centre of Bromsgrove. Like literally opposite the Salvation Army in Poundland. You couldn't make it up, could you? Yeah, look at that though. What a super looking place. If only someone turned that into a bar, right? Now there's an idea. Just around the corner from that, there's a lounge. I mean, to be fair, I haven't done a lounge for probably about a month, I don't think. So, well, we're here walking up the ice street, aren't we? Might as well do it. So, Varaco Lounge, I assume that's called. Let's get it done, it'll be stop nine. It's a lounge, which means garish lampshades, terrible paintings on the wall. Good service, friendly place, decent sort of eatery. So they're all dog friendly. Oh, the beers are exactly the same in all of them. The paintings are garish, the, the lampshades are even worse. It is just, it's the lounge. And you know, I do quite like the lounge brand as, as it goes. Out of uh, Baracco Lounge, which is literally there, uh, and I spy the Count of Spirit and Cocktail Bar. So. You know, never want to turn down a, a cocktail or even a, a whiskey or something else. So, well, mate, that's not ten. It's a hard life I lead sometimes, and it's. You know, if I wander into a cocktail bar, I'm gonna find a pina colada, right? <laughs> Eight quid. That's well cheap for a uh, cocktail in modern day, uh, modern day cocktail in times, and. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. But the, uh, these these lines that were actually in in. They call it the Vespa. So tell me on a video if you uh, have ever heard of a Vespa. So I'm, uh, I'm intrigued to see this being made because I have never, ever, ever heard of a Vespa. And it sounds like death by shot, to be honest, doesn't it? It sounds like, yeah, sounds like death by shot. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll, have a, we'll have a look at this in a second. Settled on, two parts vodka, two parts gin, one part vermouth. Like, you know, like Martini Bianco. It's just served, not over ice or anything like that, it's served. Like that. It has a, a sliver of lemon on the top. A sliver, oh. a sli I, I'm sure that adds to the, uh, yeah, a, a sliver of lemon on the top. So, uh, and I'm in the well, uh there you go, bro. There we go. So, still don't look appealing. It looks like a budget James Bond. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm intrigued, but yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've been I've been told I've like, tried it. He, he doesn't want to try it. I know he, he doesn't want to do it. Right, so we, we, we'll, we'll try this and we'll see. To be honest, that's not bad. Your face don't say that. My face don't say a lot of things, but yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> to be honest, that's not too bad. Honestly, yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, I don't know. If, you, if you've never heard of a Vespa, you've never had one, maybe try one. Top notch pina colada, but I said that one of the beauties of this place, it's got some of the stuff on offer in here. All that mead. If only I wanted to carry a bottle of mead around with me, but apparently I'm going somewhere rough now, aren't I? Yeah, right, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. Nothing around here is going to be rough, but the selection of stuff they've got in here on offer is absolutely belting. Lovely little place, this. Well worth stopping in to see. All the different sorts of arrows and... Oh, if I spot a... Uh, a b <laughs> Luckily, I've already got a Sinatra Select Jack Daniels and the Blue Bible Johnny Walker at home. Otherwise, I would be taking them with me. But yeah, what a selection, guys. This is a super place. Come with it. Great little place. But as if we haven't done enough Red Lions already, uh, we come to... A Marston's version uh, of the Red Lion up here on the uh, on the high street above Blunt's shoes. Wouldn't say that if I was drunk, probably. But yeah, the Red Lion. This is obviously an old hotel building, coaching in like something like that, isn't it? So it's obviously been here uh, many many years, uh, and now under the stewardship of Marston's by the looks of things. So let's make it stop. Eleven is the Red Lion. Little gap feels this though, it's always an old coaching in like is it? Uh, up the front, uh, and then, but that was on. So I've gone with the Rib James. Don't think I've ever tried this before, so we'll be untapping that. It's got the Wayne Wrights on, but yeah, super, super little place. I love these old coaching inns because you just feel historic, don't they? Definitely my, uh, definitely my first taste of this Rib James original ever. You know what? I just quite like that. That colour isn't normally my cup of tea. That's pretty nice. It's really good fun in the Red Line, to be honest. The uh, the staff and the regulars have a, a nice little bit of banter, a nice rapport going on, which is good to see. A few yards out from there and opposite is that absolute beauty of a structure. Not sure what it is anymore. Um, it's like a knitting or a wool shop or something. But yeah, what a, what a great structure. Um, sewing stuff in one of the, the downstairs bits. But yeah, incredible walking around. Seeing some of the stuff, I didn't uh, didn't know much about Bromsgate before I got it to be. I didn't realise it was it was quite so old or historic, but it certainly is. It's uh, I'm having a really really good day. I know I say that a lot, don't I? And I am doing it, so I always have a good day. <sighs> do I do it? Do I do it? Do I do it? Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I not? Should I not? It's a slug and lettuce. Why not? I mean, there, there's a there's a decent looking pub opposite. Or the post office. Craft beers and car scales. I mean, that sounds right up my street. Uh, you know, we're here. We're clear. We might as well have a beer. Hey, I'm a poet. I don't even know it. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try and blag you. But I did just order a Malibu and Diet Coke. I did, honestly. It's in this yeah. However, it's not the uh, the most le the least manly thing I could have ordered. Apparently, they do. Uh, they actually do drinks in a silver glitter ball with a pink hat on. So you know, a Malibu and Diet Coke is not probably as horrific as I could have ordered. But you know what, it, actually as far as slug and lettuces go, it's, uh, it's a decent enough establishments, nice looking, and leave me in peace to enjoy my Malibu, yeah? I can feel your disappointment watching over me. You know what, I'm not averse to a Malibu and Diet Coke. I drank enough manly beers and 15.5. I said Nottingham Craft Beer Festival next week, I'm doing a 26% Imperial Stout, so Allow me the courtesy of having the odd palate cleansing Malibu and Diet Coke, will ya? And stop judging me. Anyway, dead opposite. Craft beers, car scales. Craft beers, car scales. I have a feeling I'm gonna like it in here. Stop, uh, stop, stop 14, 14. I'll pose this. All right, so, I'm assuming mean, it's a beautiful building, don't get me wrong. It is a beautiful building, look. That is a, that's a stunning looking bar, but look, the beer lineup of Doom. Yeah, you can see it too. There are two decent uh, car scales on HBO and Butty. Uh, are on, I've gone with a, with a Butty in here. But there are no craft beers. Uh, I did ask that. I said, oh, what's the craft beer? Oh, what's the craft beer? He, he said, oh, look, we've got Foster's, John Smith, Strombo, Cart. I said, they're not craft beers. He, he didn't know what craft beer were. Um, so that is very disappointing. It's owned by Amber Taverns now. So. Pure Amber is 
they're going for a certain niche, they're going for a certain clientele, they're going for a certain vibe, price bracket, things like that. It's very cheap, half a buddy, one pound, 60, one pound 70, something like that. It's very cheap, uh, but yeah, just it, uh, that needs taken down where it says craft beers, because let's face it, there are no craft beers in here, none whatsoever. So don't, don't keep advertising up on the front of the building when well, you do a refurb, at least change the frontage if you're not going to offer that. So, I don't dislike Amber Taverns. Uh, again, it's a beautiful building. I don't dislike them, but that definitely isn't what I was expecting when I came through the door. Right, just around the corner from there is the Queen's Head. Doesn't look very open from this side, but there are definitely people in there doing something. I'm assuming it's open. Must, uh, must have to walk around the other side. Let's have a wander around the other side and see, shall we? So, I mean, there's definitely a door open. We'll find out together. Because I would assume you would go in via there. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's people working in there. Yeah, looks like it is closed. And we can't do the Queen's Head because it's currently closed down. If you look through the window, yeah. You can see all the, the boxes and the... So obviously being uh, being done up, ready to reopen, hopefully, because it looks a it looks a nice boozer. So can't do that one. So let's move on. A little bit of a walk up out of the town now, but I'm pretty sure this one came reasonably highly recommended to me. So looking forward to it. Bit of five minute walk, I think, down down this major road uh, out of the town to the Hop Pole Inn, and I think it's stop 15 of the day. So I've got a couple more left in me, I think. But yeah. Hot pole in then is up next. Yeah, this place was definitely shouted out to me and I, I totally see why. This place is pretty wicked. Four good ales on over there. I've gone for the hot till you drop in here. So I've never had that one before and it is actually very, very good. Uh, it's a lovely bar, this. I get totally, it's dog friendly. It's a lovely dog I sat around there. And it is a pretty cool little space. As usual, you always tell me the best places to go and you, you've nailed it again. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely think this is, this is an absolute belter. So, uh, so what I've got comes from Woodcoat Brewing Company. So I've never heard of them before, but it is, uh, it's a very, very nice tip. We've got some other good stuff on. Can of Stout, it's so much better than Guinness. Honestly, people who, people who swear by Guinness, I will never understand you. And anybody who swears by forged Irish Stout, I'll never, uh, literally, I will, I will never speak to you people because I don't understand what you're thinking. But yeah, Can of Stout, one of the best. This is, uh, this is pretty tidy. And this is a fantastic little pub. Super pub, that. I'll be honest, I am flagging. I did 25 pubs yesterday. Uh, a lot of walking. A lot of roaming around. So a lot of walking today. Um, there's nowhere else that really looks that appealing to me to walk to tonight. So this is going to be it. This is the Crab Mill Inn. So it's not far up from where I've come. That BP sign. About 100 yards past that uh, is where I've come from. So not a million miles. But let's do the Crab Mill Inn. That's my final stop of the night. I think that takes me to 15 or 16 today. I'll do a proper count and I want to do the Facebook post. But if you don't follow us on Facebook, please do follow us on Facebook because that's where I write all the reviews. There's photos, info, tidbits about where to go, what to do, all over Facebook. So it's definitely the, uh, the best place to follow us on. Um, you'll just find it facebook.com forward slash the Great British Pub Rule. Uh, it's dead easy to find. But yeah, here we are then. My final resting point for the night until I get my head down back at the hotel. It's the crab milling. As if by magic, that is going to bring me to a close. Uh, half an eight to finish me off. Decent enough tap mix and stuff in here. This is good. This is good. It's HPA stuff. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a decent pub. Cool table. Bits and pieces. Uh, big L shape. Those are. It's been a long couple of days. I'm off to Yorkshire tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it.